Namaste everyone and good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. So this is Friday and as you know, Friday is for prosperity healing and emotional healing. And what we're doing, we're doing prosperity healing in the morning and then we'll do emotional healing uh, tonight or the second session, wherever you are. Now before we do this, just to kind of put things in context, we're going to do the short talk on understanding about pers a little more on prosperity healing. And then when we do the meditation, uh, a big part of meditation is we're going to be allowing ourselves to be channels to bless the earth, bless the world. And I just want you to keep in mind a certain place in the world that are going through tough times. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of Germany and certain parts of Europe being flooded. And uh, last I heard, there's a hundred people that passed and maybe over a thousand that's missing. Okay. And of course, uh, Cuba is still at address, Venezuela, South Africa. There's so many places. Again, I just want to emphasize that there's no possible way for us to mention all of them. So we'll just mention the key ones and then during the blessing, uh, meditation and blessing, you just focus that energy there. Okay. Besides, we're not the one blessing anyway. We're not, we're not that arrogant like we're the one who we're super powerful we're blessing. We're just being pipelines. We're just lucky enough. The way I look at it is we're just lucky enough to be the guys and gals to be holding the fire hose, <laughs> the Jadamus fire hose, and pouring these blessings to those areas. In other words, it gives us the opportunity to serve. Okay, just keep that in mind. And I always share that with you because a lot of people don't realize that you know there are certain things you want to be blessed with. You want to be blessed with happiness, blessed with joy, blessed with this, and blessed with that. That's great and wonderful. One of the key ingredients for that to happen is to be of service to others. To give money to charity, to help people in need. Because in the Kri Shakti course, the prosperity course that my teacher teaches to us now, is there's this thing which is called the principle of entitlement. Not the <laughs> entitlement that people know for, oh, I'm entitled, this entitled. No, the principle of entitlement basically says whatever we have, good or bad, somehow there's some seeds that we planted in the past that we are harvesting. Plain English, law of karma. And I always say, it's not your opinion of karma, it's the law of karma. <laughs> okay? Just keep that in mind. Because there are certain people who are still, let's just say, think they in a, live in a twilight zone or some reality that, oh, the law of karma doesn't touch me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay? So this law of entitlement basically is planting and harvesting. So... In the process of focusing on helping others, being an instrument to bless others, that energy passes through us. Simultaneously, we're planting good seeds. That is what entitles the blessings to be absorbed by our system. All right? Anyway, that's just a very, very broad statement. Go in more detail. And I know some of you probably don't, don't agree. Because, oh, no, you know, there's no such thing. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> that's what I would say. When people say, I don't believe it, I go, whatever. I don't believe in... Gravity, okay, jump off a building, then don't do it, okay? Then you will believe it, but it might be a little too late, <laughs> okay? So the point is, it is there, and you just harness it, clear? Now, for prosperity healing, I was looking for um, a subject, a topic, a concern that people have that we want to clean out. And one of the biggest things that people always say is, money does not bring happiness. You heard that before? Or money does not buy happiness. In fact, I've heard people say, and this is part of the Prosperity Zen, okay? The Prosperity Zen uh, workshop that is closing in two weeks. Just want to put that in there so you guys are, are aware. Not two weeks, one week. All right. You hear people mentioning, complaining, whatever word, money does not bring happiness. And they're not happy with that. You want to add more. Oh, actually, having money brings problems. You heard that before? All right, so step one, write this down. You heard this from many, many teachers. Correlation does not always mean causation. Write it down. Just because <laughs> an accident happened at the corner of a street, just because one person standing there doesn't, person, doesn't mean that that person caused the accident. <laughs> Get that? That's why people get into problems. They don't think. They just say, oh, I saw a guy there. There's an accident. Ah, therefore, that guy caused the accident. 
even a five-year-old <laughs> would not say he caused it. He is there. Exactly the point. Correlation does not mean causation. It could be, but not all the time. Make sense? So that's why people on the spiritual path, I know this is, some of you might think I'm insulting. I'm not trying to, okay? I'm just, because all of us fall into this trap. Just because we're spiritual, you think the laws of nature don't affect us. There, there's still a thing called the third law of Newton. One causes something else. <laughs> okay? All right, now that said, so when people have, you know, start bringing, uh, just start saying this, oh, money does not bring happiness, in fact, it brings problems. Two things. They don't understand that just because it's present at the same time doesn't mean one is causing the other. Like we mentioned, correlation does not always mean causation. Okay? <clears throat> then to take it one step further, some people think, yeah, I know a lot of rich people who are bad and their life is terrible. Okay? It doesn't mean that money causes their problems because you could easily say there are a lot of people out there who are prosperous and are happy. Get the idea? You see, the key here is to really sharpen your mind because without sharpening your mind, it's just simply a bias. And if I'm going to dig a little deeper, which I know some of you might not be happy about it, it's as simple as this. Some people are struggling financially and they use that saying to kind of justify them suffering. You get the point? In other words, they're broke and they say, well, because money doesn't bring happiness. So they want to stay broke. Who wouldn't want to stay broke? But the point is, you see, it's not because they consciously want to, consciously want to stay broke. It requires effort to pull themselves out from being broke. Make sense? So, since they're not in that consciousness, I'm just, you know, making this airy fairy. <laughs> they're not in that mindset or that will to want to get out of it because they don't want to go to the effort because they're lazy asses. <laughs> then they use a spiritual reason to justify why they're broke. How do I know? I was like that before. Until my teacher picked me up and go, psh, 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 psh. no, he was cleaning my crown chakra. <laughs> you get the point? So, what happens is, <clears throat> without really sitting down and doing your meditation and observing, we have a tendency, I'm saying we, again, I'm not just pointing a finger at you, we have a tendency to just grab some spiritual teaching, distort it, and make it fit us. Now, so the idea is first, that's a fallacy. Money does not does not bring bring happiness. Does not bring suffering. It's what you do with it. It is neutral. Money is neutral. Just like if you have a pen. Just because you signed a contract on a business that went down the toilet, <laughs> doesn't mean that this cause the business to go down the down the drain. Make sense? Just because you sign you use this pen to sign a contract on an investment that took off like a rocket and you're now a gazillionaire, does not mean that the pen caused you to be a gazillionaire. Use your head. <laughs> Make sense? So, money is the same thing. It's neutral. You use the money incorrectly, you screw up your life. You use the money correctly, your life is better. Clear? The key is to understand money is simply a tool that we use. It all starts with the I, the spiritual self. Does the soul, the spiritual self, have clarity to understand and know what money really is and use the body, the emotions, and the thoughts to use the money? That's what determines whether you have happiness or you suffer. Period. Period, period, period. <laughs> I don't know how else to tell you. And when we teach these prosperity classes, that's usually the biggest obstacle. The biggest domino, if you will. When that falls, the rest of the domino falls. 
Because if they can get through that thick skull that money is not causing your problems, it's your attitude towards money that's causing the problems. And that's what's getting you stuck. Once that domino falls, it's just like somebody, and you pour cold water on them. People go, wow. Make sense? Now, you know, you heard the saying, old habits takes a long time to get rid of. Something like to that effect. That's because the soul unknowingly has been creating these thought forms. The thoughts and emotions that kind of help manifest this financial problem. So the key is to go back to who you are, the spiritual self and the soul. <laughs> Step one, stop doing that stupid thing. <laughs> stop creating those negative thoughts. All right? Yeah, but you know, it's a saying. Who cares if it's a saying? You don't know, mean you have to join it. Besides, you already know. The general public is usually going the wrong way. Especially with money. Isn't it? Uh, what percentage does the wealth of the wealth in the world <laughs> distributed? To the masses? No. 1%. Mindset? Very, very different. So if you say, yeah, everybody's doing it, then you're bound to be as... Let's just say having some challenges like everybody else. If it's flowing this way, you have to go the other direction. So if people say, oh, money does not bring happiness, blah, blah, blah. You just say, erase, disintegrate. We will cover that. Clear? So no technique will help you if the mindset is wrong. Now... Since you guys are such amazing souls, let me put one thing in front of you. Knowing that money is a tool, what projects can you embark on that will help people, what that will help the world? What if you put your attention there and say, I need to fulfill this part of my destiny? And how do I do it well, and how do I scale it up with using money? Now, the money is literally the tool. And when your perception is that way, money is the tool, two things happen. Number one, you have a greater goal to aspire for, so that will pull you forward. It will pull you out of your depression, pull you out of your worries and cares and concerns because you go, you know, whatever's happening here is temporary because I have a, I have a re bigger reason to be on earth. Make sense? So you're always forward thinking. You know, people keep saying, oh, energy follows thought, energy follows worry, put your attention, early. you know, they quote this, okay, then leave it, live it. Energy follows where you put your attention, so put your attention there. Step one. Step two. By having higher aspirations, money loses its control over you. Think about it. So instead of going, oh, we're going to get money or whatever, you know, you, now what happens is money controls you, right? But since your aspiration is much higher, the thing is flipped around. I need to have more money or or whatever amount of money, because there's the goal I need to fulfill. So you, money, are just something I use. That's that. That breaks you from that chain that the general public has. True? That's how you use spirituality to become prosperous. Because now, you want to be prosperous not just because you want money, because think about it. How many cars can you drive at one time? How many watches can you wear at one time? How many homes can you live in one time? I was just listening to one of my lectures of my teacher. That's what he was saying. How much can you eat in one day? How, many, how much stuff can you have in one day or in one lifetime? This limited amount. So the key here is not that is not what you're aiming for. It's good to have a great life, but you aspire for something higher. So as you aspire for something higher, 
your happiness is created by you. It has nothing to do with money. Money is just simply the tool to get you to, to, to get you there. It's not the hammer. <laughs> your objective is to drive the nail in. So don't get them, I want to have a Gucci hammer. Who the hell cares? Grab the hammer. As long as when you hit it, it hits the nail and drives it in. That's all you care about. Make sense? So when your mindset changes about money, it loses its power over you. Then the other, it turns around. You become the one that uses the money. Finished. So what will happen? Here's what will happen. I'll tell you right now. You start to aspire. You know, I really want to open up that spiritual center. I really want to open up that spa. I really want to, I don't know, feed these hungry people. I want to have an orphanage. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to feed all these people that are suffering, so on, so on, right? So as you have these greater goals, what happens? You end up working harder not just because you want to line up your pockets and have like 20 Mercedes and there are five Lamborghini, Lamborghinis in your, in your driveway. Then your aspiration is, I really need to work hard because there's so many people I want to help. Then your life changes around and your happiness is now dependent on the people you serve. That's a fulfilling life. And I remember I was talking to my teacher about it, and I'll say this again and again to all of you until you get so tired of me already. Money in the hands of good people changed the world. Being broke doesn't help anybody. <laughs> Stick it to your head. <laughs> okay? In fact, I'm so inspired when I see, um, every time I spend time with Tony Robbins, uh, you know, in our conversations, you know, oftentimes they'll come up about his feeding, you know, giving money to feed people. And I shared this with you before. You know, one of his goals was to feed a billion people in 10 years. I always say this because for me, it's still amazing. You know, when you put zeros, zeros are a super powerful number. You put it in front, there's a meaning. You put it in the back, man, it becomes amazing. A billion, a thousand millions. Could you imagine? A billion is a thousand millions. His goal is to feed a billion people in the span of 10 years. And I remember I was talking to him a few weeks ago when I was in Florida. Yeah, and we had a schedule. It's seven years. And we're almost there. I'm going. And he always says in the seminar, if you've been there, he says, I make more money sleeping <laughs> than, you know, jumping up and down and really using all that energy for several days in a row when he does his UPW and other events where he, he goes all out. He says, I work so hard not because I need more money. He does, he can sleep and make more money. But as you see, but I had bigger goals. And his goal is not for himself, it's to serve all these people. And I remember my teacher, Grandmaster Tsohok Si, working in a similar manner. He didn't have to work. He could stay in the Philippines, relax, he has money, he has a business that runs. But what does he do? He travels, at that time, traveled uh, maybe nine to ten months out of the year, if you put it all together. You know, time zone, different time zone every week, on the plane every week, and so on and so on. And he was work, working harder then. Then he says, if I'm just a businessman, I can sit in my office and make money in my sleep. But no. You know why? Because he wants to spread spiritual teachings. He wants to enlighten people. He wants to have the funds to bring, you know, to build a spiritual center in India, which is now thriving like crazy. Get the idea? Shift your consciousness, and guess what? Money gets attracted to you, because now money is being utilized for something for a higher purpose. And at that point, money can bring happiness. Because the happiness you have is not for the sake of having money, because money is now bringing you happiness as you fulfill your goals, your aspirations, your destiny. That's that. Finished.
Clear? You can read a thousand books on motivation and this, and affirmation and all that. If you don't get this part straight, all those are useless. Because we always go back to the same concept my teacher said. Big fish eat small fish. The thoughts and emotions we created in the past, over a period of time, just like money in the bank or investment, they grow interest. So just you saying, oh yeah, you know, whatever affirmation you do now, they're like, a little thing like this. That ginormous fish will just gobble it up. So until we get rid of that stuff, it's not happening. And you start with having that realization. Okay, my past does not define my future. Whatever thoughts and ideas I have about money before, especially the wrong ones, we're going to be disintegrating them, releasing them, and from here on, I'm going to generate more and more prosperity thoughts because I have bigger goals. I want to fulfill my spiritual destiny. I want to give myself and my family a better life. I want to be able to serve more people, to serve the world, serve the environment. And guess what happens? That internal shift will change everything in your life. And to get a little geeky on you, what is that? Who is that? So ultra smart guy? Heisenberg. Heisenberg and un- un- what? Heisenberg uncertainty principle. If you're into quantum mechanics, <clears throat> without going into much detail, essentially what happened? They're saying that the act of observing an electron changes its position. So, well, we already know you have electrons, you have atoms, you have this and that. These are building blocks of matter. So the act of observing could move an electron. Uh, if you're able to use your attention to move one electron, concentrated attention could move many electrons and atoms, which move matter. That's what you call materialization or manifestation. Now, when you say move, it could move in either direction. So if a person who complains a lot, well, guess what, buddy? You just create your reality. You have no right to complain your suffering because you created it. <laughs> make sense? I didn't make the rules, buddy. I'm just a lucky guy to open the mouth and just share this with you because I've seen it in my life. Every time I keep complaining, everything goes to keep going down the toilet. When my teacher came around, slapped me around, <laughs> say, hey, change your mind, change your thoughts. As the Lord Buddha said, everything stems with your mind, things start to shift. And you already know. You've seen this, what do you call this? Uh, Back to the Future movie, right? <laughs> small change in your timeline. Even if it's just a small, if it's supposed to be going this direction, if you just make a micro shift at a span of time, you're in a different place. Because there's this thing called space-time. You cannot separate space and time. They're always together. That's one of the things that Einstein came up with. Not a smart dude. I love having these smart dudes around, you know? So I don't think we figure things out. They figure it out, we just apply it. As you move through space, you're also moving through time. They're connected. So if you just simply shift your consciousness, shift your attention, even by a tiny bit, as you move through time and move through space, it changes. Now, if the trajectory is already downwards and you don't do anything, guess what? (laughs) Same thing happens. The rules, the laws are neutral. It's what we do with them. So to finish it up, again, money neither brings <laughs> or, or prevents you from being happy. It's nothing more than a tool. And if you look at it that way, it's an empowering thing to be saying, hey, I control money, not the other way around. If I have a hammer, I control the hammer. <laughs> 
not the hammer controls me. Because if the hammer controls me, I might hit my head. <laughs> yeah? But if I control the hammer, okay, I want to drive that nail there, boom. Because I'll be able to build a house. Because of building that house, I can help people who are homeless. You, you get the idea? You know, in other words, it's a cascading effect. Once you have that shift in your consciousness, it goes like that. We have recovered it. I'm not going to do it again. The science of materialization. It starts with a thought. Then it moves down in frequency to emotions. It moves down in frequency into movement. That process is how things materialize. It starts with a thought. That's why the act of observing something changes it. Because your thoughts, your energy, your attention shifts it. That's it. One of these days, we'll have a short discussion on how so-called quantum reality affects your life. It's quite amazing. And if you really study into it, some of you might actually have a realization like, wow, this entire universe is an illusion. It's not really an illusion. It's just pure energy vibrating at different frequencies or waves. And every time a wave is focused, a certain part of this wave you put your attention to, it starts acting like a particle. It's just like, imagine, you have this fabric, right? When you put your attention on a certain part of the fabric, it's just like you grab that part of the fabric, crumple it. Now you're putting your attention to it. Yet that, fa that part that crumples up like a bunch didn't just appear out of nowhere. It's already there. It's just the minute you put your attention to, that energy, that wave, becomes particle-like. So you have this universal ocean of energy, it's like a wave. Let me just say, I want to be more prosperous because I have many projects I need to fulfill in this lifetime. Guess what? Then the energy of the universe bends towards your goal. Think about it. We'll talk about it one of these days. That's just a little teaser. You know, like a movie, you have a trailer, like you have Avengers, whatever. They don't show you the movie, right? They give you a snippet of one minute ago. <laughs> so one of these days. All right. Anyway, you did not hear, you're coming to hear me yak. You're here to be prosperity healed. So let's do it. But you already know, you first have to plant before you harvest. So one of the ways we're going to plant is do meditation, bless the world, bless the earth, Bless Germany, bless, bless different parts of the world. Okay? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, to my beloved teacher, Master Tohokshui Mahagu Jumailing, we thank you for divine light, divine love, guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. Thank you. In full faith, so be it. All right. The, intention, the meditation is going to be intense. Not going to be long, but intense because I just finished meditating a few minutes ago. <laughs> so... I'm like, guess what? Good luck to you. We're going to roast your, crank up your energy. All right, shall we? Gently tap your crown. I am that. I am. I am the spirit yourself. I'm not the body. I am the spirit yourself. I'm not the emotions. I am the spirit yourself. I'm not even my mind. I am the spirit yourself. I am that. The spirit yourself. The soul. Be still. I am connected in one to my higher soul, my higher self. I am connected in one to the divine spark, the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God, I am one with God, I am one with all. There is only oneness. We are one. There's only oneness. We are one. Our hearts are one, our crowns are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. There is only oneness. This is the truth regardless of the capacity 
of our brains and nervous system to register this truth. It is. Open your hands in blessing. Visualize the earth in front of you. Be aware of your heart. Be aware of your hands. Flood the earth with beautiful pink light. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere in the world, anywhere, within me, within my family, my relatives and friends, within the city, state, country, anywhere in the world, let me sow God's unconditional love and kindness. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. Let's just picture Germany and different parts of the world. Cuba, Colombia, Venezuela, uh, South Africa, so many parts in the world. Lebanon, Iran, Iraq. So many places in the world where people are suffering. And many times suffering silently. May all of them be blessed with hope and with faith and a better world, a better tomorrow. So be it. You might know relatives and friends who are struggling or having some challenges in their life. Bless them with hope and with faith and a better life. So be it. May all be blessed. Hope and with faith, especially the people in Germany who are just you know, they said thousands could be missing. Bless them with hope and with faith that these people are found safe and healthy. So be it. And the different parts of the world are having political unrest that cause suffering to the people. Let there be hope and with faith for political stability and order. So be it. Where there's darkness, let me sow light, and where there's sadness, let me sow joy. Be aware of your heart, just say, our hearts are one, and in this oneness, we humbly ask to be channels and instruments to bless the earth with peace, with love, with a spirit of forgiveness and reconciliation, with hope and with faith, with light and with joy. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Now be aware of your heart, take a deep breath, be aware of your crown, exhale, and stay there. Your crown is filled with so much golden light. Let that golden light just pour down through your hands to the entire earth. Again, blessing your family, your friends, your loved ones. And let that golden light spread through the entire earth. See it just intensifying, that golden light just intensifying, blessing the people in Germany and different parts of the world. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth, especially in these areas, be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. Let all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all be blessed. So be it. Just fill the earth with golden light. Golden energy has intelligence. Let it go to where it's needed. May it heal. May it protect. May it bless every part of the world that's needed. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Now, gently be aware of your heart and your crown. Take a deep breath. And as you exhale, imagine golden light pouring out of your hands, filled, filling the earth with this intense, bright golden light. From the center of the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, 
May every person, every being in the higher worlds, the middle worlds, even the lower worlds, let all beings in every dimension, every direction, above and below, be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. Let all be blessed with inner peace and inner healing. And for many at this time, physical healing, emotional healing, relationship healing, and financial healing. And again, think of the place in the world need blessings and healing. So be it. From the center of the heart of God, may all be blessed with understanding, harmony, goodwill, and the willingness to do good. So be it. Especially in the areas where people need help. Let us remember we are our brother and sister's keeper. Extend that helping hand to people who need help. So be it. May all be blessed with peace, love, and kindness. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Now lower your hands on your lap. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Imagine on top of your head, just floating up there, is a beautiful golden star. It is so bright. Just be aware of the love within your heart. Let the love within your heart just rise up, up to the crown and into that golden star. Ah. Stay there. Just listen, I am the spiritual self. I'm not the body, I am the spiritual self. I'm not the emotions, I am the spiritual self. I'm not the mind, I am the spiritual self. I am that spiritual self. That spiritual self am I. I am that. Be still. I am that spiritual self. And that spiritual self is one with the spiritual self in all. I am that. That am I. Be still. And listen. Be still. Be aware of your true nature. Remember who you are. Remember your true and real self. That is one with all. Let go, let go, and just let things be now.
maintain your stillness, maintain your awareness and sense of oneness, just be still. From within that star, just be aware of your consciousness, sense of oneness. Be still. Maintain that stillness and awareness. From within that beautiful star, imagine you're looking down at your body and just form the intention, any poverty consciousness thoughts, negative ideas about money, about happiness, that money causes problems, any of these thoughts and emotions that we generated before, just look down and observe it. Just observe they're like gray clouds coming off your mind, different parts of your body, thoughts and ideas that cause you to have financial issues are now coming off the body, coming off the basic chakra, the base of the spine, the ajna, the throat, and different parts of the body. Just observe it coming out like smoke, coming through the surface. And just say, these thoughts, these emotions are not me. They're not the I. I created them out of ignorance, but they're not I. They have no power over me now or ever. So it is. Just be still. The liquid divine energy is pouring down your crown. Your crown chakra is being cleansed. All these negative thoughts and emotions are disintegrated, extracted, expelled to the near salt water or violet fire to you continues to work. The liquid divine energy pours down into your ajna, your back head, your forehead. All your head chakras are saturated with this divine energy. All negative thoughts and energy, especially negative ideas that are in your brain, your crown chakra, whatever parts of your head are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled to the near salt water or violet fire to you. So be it. The liquid divine energy is pouring down through your throat centers. Any type of worry about money unhealthy worry about money are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled the near salt water to you or violet fire to you. The liquid divine energy is pouring down, down to the back of your heart in between your shoulder blades, entering your shoulder blades, in between your shoulder blades and filling up your front and back heart as well as your astral body, your higher emotional body and filling it with peace, with love, with joy and happiness and ananda, divine bliss, so it is. Be still. The liquid divine energy is pouring down to your front and back solar plexus. Any anxiety about money are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled in near salt water and violet fire to you. The liquid divine energy is pouring the pores down to your navel, your sex center, Simultaneously down your spine, purifying your back heart, back solar plexus, down, down to the base of your spine, your basic chakra. The liquid divine energy is gently, decisively disintegrating any poverty, poverty consciousness thoughts, ideas about money and abundance in your basic chakra, whether now or in the past, generated now in the past. These thoughts, these emotions, these tendencies are dissolved, disintegrated, completely dismantled and released from your basic chakra to the nearest salt water or violet fire to you. So be it. Just be still. Om.
just be still allow the energy to go deeper into your mind your body your emotions into your consciousness dissolving and releasing any conscious or subconscious poverty thoughts scarcity lack fear of money fear of success all these are now being flushed out of your system just be still let it work So it is. Just be still. Say, I'm letting go. I'm completely letting go of all these negative thoughts and energies that don't serve me, that don't serve my higher purpose. These are all disintegrated, released completely out of me and never have any more power over me. So be it. Cut, disintegrate, release. The near salt water, violet fire to you. So it is. Be still. Now gently raise your hands in blessing. We'll release the excess energy. You know, when you do that meditation, so much energy is generated, subtle spiritual energy. So we're going to release it by blessing again. So first start with your family or the people you love. Fill them with golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, with happiness, with prosperity, and with spirituality. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Now be aware of your feet, the base of your spine. In your hands, just flood the earth below you with golden light. This grounds you. Repeat after me. Let our beloved Mother Earth and all her children, all of creation, be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. May all be blessed, be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. So be it. So be it, and so it is. Let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, especially the angels of prosperity, to my beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Twakok Sri Mahaguru Jameli. Thank you for your immense blessings. In full faith, so it is. Okay, open your eyes. Observe your thoughts. Observe your emotions. Anybody notice it's quiet? Observe. Here's the key. Observe your perception of money. And you kind of notice like it's, yeah, it's money. It's just like, this is a cup. This is my mobile phone. This is just, you're observing. That's where you regain your power. Because now you observe. Okay, it's a cup. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that. Very simple. And so the more you do your meditation and spiritual practice, the more you regain your true power yourself. Then you create the abundance. It's simple. I think that's one of the reasons why people don't like it. It's too simple. And it also means that you have to recognize who you are first. And for a lot of people, that's too much work. But I congratulate you for joining me because uh, I pound this into you every single session. <laughs> All right. Anyway, just a quick announcement. So tonight, well, at least California time, uh, seven hours and eight minutes from now, we're doing emotional healing. Again, this is one of those things. The more you clean out, listen, the more space we create to receive. So keep that in mind. And uh, <clears throat> the Prosperity Zen, which you know, I go into more detail about Purging Poverty Consciousness, nine weeks of it and all that. Just go to massacre.org. It's closing in two weeks or one week. I have to ask my assistant. I, know, I don't know these things. Anyway, I think in a week or so. So make sure you register if you, it's something you're interested. At the minimum, there's that free meditation and um, workshop that you can practice with. It's there. All right. And next weekend, 
if I, you have a US address where you're going to this class, uh, keeping one is with the higher soul, and we go into more detail, your true speech yourself, your higher speech yourself, and how we connected it all. Okay? Anyway, all of it is in masterco.org. We will see you there. Namaste, everyone. You all take care. And continue to pray for Germany, for Florida, for Lebanon, for South Africa. I mean, there's so many places. You know, let's just do our part uh, in serving. Take good care. Namaste. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.